All right, thank you. Hi, this is KS Bowling with G Reels Entertainment Media. How are you doing today? I'm great. Nice to meet you. Um, nice to meet you as well. Uh, I just want to say congratulations on uh, Hocus Pocus 2 in general. I know that it uh, did very well on Disney Plus uh, over its first three days. So congratulations that you're such a big part of it as well, like designing the look. And I, I really want to ask you first, you know, cause, like the first Hocus Pocus is so beloved, you know, and everything. Uh, how did this come about for you to be a part of this? And what did it feel like to kind of get the call that you were going to be a part of it? <laughs> I was actually I was actually shopping and my agent called me. She's like, Do you have any interest in Hocus Pocus 2? I'm like, ha ha ha. She's like, they want to meet you. I'm like, ah. I mean, I remember like you're in a Minerva store and I didn't want to scream, but I had to like control myself. It was, you know, look, as a I'm not only a costume designer, but I'm a huge Hocus Pocus fan. So I've seen the movie 40 times in my life. Um, and in the interview with with Ann Fletcher, I was able to just sort of talk about the character's chapter and verse and give her the back lore. And she was they were quite impressed with my knowledge of Hocus Pocus. Nice, nice. I, I think you're like you know, so many people that, um, you know, every year, of course, that, that movie is just, just a staple in their lives. So that's cool that you get to kind of be a part of it as like a fan as well and then be able to create kind of this like fresh, like honoring what the original is, but also kind of uh, taking a fresh approach to it. I did want to ask, what was the process like of doing that, of trying to maintain, uh, you know, what people know about Hocus Pocus and then updating it for today? And how does the whole like Swiffer uh, stuff kind of tie in as well? Um, it seems like they're, uh, it's just very interesting. <laughs> well, I mean, we, you know, we have, the, the costumes by Mary Vote are iconic. So we really, the silhouettes are there. The fans love it. And as opposed to like any other film, the fans know these costumes intimately because they wear them every year um, for not right. just Halloween. Um, so it was about sticking to the colors and silhouettes, but bringing right. everything into a modern world, the finishes, the how, how things were made, the techniques, and, and having fun with it. Like, you know, Sarah needed an upgraded, you know, a uh, flying mechanism and the, the super <laughs> wet head is the sort of the modern version of a mop or a broom and everybody has one so i love that it's a relatable piece that the fans can already have probably had it in their home they didn't have to go out and buy it just for their costume but i love that it you know sort of blended perfectly and it matched your costume yeah exactly and it's funny too i like that is like you said so many people have them in their homes and that's just going to be like the one accessory that they may not even have to buy like in order to uh do their costume uh for this year um, you know, being able to work with um, and design for all three of these, I mean, everyone, but, you know, you, you know, Bette Miller and Sarah Jessica Parker, Adam and Jimmy, like there's a, you know, they're so iconic to the original movie. What was it like? I mean, I know that a lot of the look is very, you know, similar and you didn't want to like uh, dive too far away from it, but what was it like being able to kind of design for that trifecta? Oh, That's I mean pretty amazing. I'm, I'm a costume designer because I love films and I grew up watching Bette Midler movies. So, I mean, I, it was right. sort of, even though this is my 30th year in the business, meeting Bette and working with her, I felt like I was brand new. Like it was my first job. Everything else flew out the window and just getting to work with an icon who, you know, cause you're coming in like, hi, I'm Sal. I'm going to make your costume again after you had it 30 years ago. <laughs> and they loved it. I mean, all three of them loved the details that I brought. And, and I really wanted the costumes to be much more lavish and much more detailed and, you know, I, I, you know, I had many feelings with Bette and I showed her fabric swatches and you know, she fell in love with that dark chartreuse green and that's the color we went with it. And then it was really about making the costumes have movement. Um, you know, they're right. flying often that, that the costumes had to move beautifully and, and each, all three of them individually put the costume on and started to twirl and spin and work the capes. Yeah. That was so satisfying as a costume that to see them enjoying the costumes. And it was, I mean, I, I think that there's the details that you just don't get to see until you're up close and personal. And people right. will walk into the shop and they're like, oh my God. I'm like, yeah, that's, you know, that's the new version of the costumes. If you're, you're going to change them slightly, they had to be much more, much better and much right. more interesting. To take anything away would have been bad. Right. And it had to be interesting for them too, because like, even though there are some subtle differences and everything, like, it's like, they're going back to this place. Like, you know, they were at like so many years ago. So it has to be like, you know, it kind of puts them back there almost instantly and like and you're a big part of that being able to bring that look uh back for them and just like being able to create that has to feel like so special i think that's so cool absolutely and like the the first time that bet and, and mary were back in their costumes in 30 years 
was October 13th last year was our family test. And it happened to be my birthday. And we ended okay, up yeah. very late. And everybody's <laughs> like, Don't you go to dinner? I'm like, no, I'd much rather stay on set with Bette Midler flying in my costume than go to a birthday dinner. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that is the ultimate birthday present. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> if you were to have one. Um, you know, you know, like you've been doing this for a while and like I, you know, like I'm sure like each job is just different, but was it were you was it ever daunting wanting to accept this? Because like the first movie is so iconic. Like yeah, I was mean, there any I pause? <laughs> There was definitely, I mean, the, before I even had took the interview, I called up Mary Vote, and I'm like, why aren't you doing this? And she's like, look, I designed the first one. Let's have somebody else have fresh ideas. And then we talked yeah. about how she made the costumes. And so I knew intimately where the costumes came from, which great, gave me a great point to start the next version of them because I knew her thought process and I was able yeah. to take that and work with it. And then of course, there's obviously new characters to build like Gilbert and the Mother Witch and then the flashback scene. So, I, you know, not only did I get to recreate their costumes, but I got to really have fun and design the, you know, the new iconic characters. Yeah, that's a good uh, good point to segue on because, you know, like all the original people are iconic, but you get to kind of put your own stamp on some of these uh, newer characters. What was it like kind of that creative process for you? Well, you know, how often do you get to design a Disney villain? I mean, I get to do you know, <laughs> the next iconic Disney villain, and we really wanted her to sort of stand out from the witches. So, I, you know, finding something that was that bright, bright red. And she was, and then Lynn wanted her to be a red winged raven, which was a, a local bird to to uh, Salem. And mm -hmm. we saw images of it, and we loved the sort of coloring on the, on the shoulders. And so I added that to the costume of, of, of Mother Witch. And then ironically, it's the same colorings as Little Danny. And so I love putting little Easter eggs throughout the film. I mean, there's, the, right. you know, the, we, we reproduce some of the costumes, you know, the, the angel and the devil, you know, Penny and Gary Marshall. And I got to do the, the Mom Donna costume in the background and the, and the, uh, the Supremes. And I was really having fun, like, because Cassie's final costume, we found that great tie-dye t-shirt. I'm like, oh my God, it's so Max. And then as I was putting layers together, I found that, you know, floral cardigan. I'm like, ah, it's Max. If Max and Allison had a baby, it would be, it would be cast. <laughs> so those little, those little Easter eggs in the, in the costumes was fun to play with. Exactly. Um, well, you know, like, because it being Halloween soon and uh, <laughs> the first movie is already so popular, this one is already proving to be popular. I know a lot of people are going to want to re recreate try to recreate these costumes at home. Like, is there any advice to people on like how to like, what they can kind of do like, you know, like on their own to kind of get some of these looks and kind of, you know, show off well, in a big way on Halloween? I was really inspired by the cosplayers because people really love recreating these costumes. And the one thing that I noticed is that everybody has their own take on it. So have fun yeah. with it. You know, do put your own stamp on the costume, make it, make it unique. I mean, uh, it's, it, there's the, you don't have to follow every rule have fun with it and, and really just sort of be inspired yeah. by it also the benefit is that it's you know it's streaming on disney plus so you can watch it and pause it and watch it over and over again yeah you get all the details yeah, yeah think about it. all the other people made the costumes watching the film you know occasionally this the, the audience now can really just sort of watch it and you know minute details to make their clothes right uh, i'm gonna wrap up with uh with this one you know on the off chance if like Get to do another one of these. Would you want to? Would you want to hop back on in this world like any second? Would you be down to do something like this again? Absolutely, because there was there was a talk of doing an epilogue scene where um, we got to do a whole new costume, and I was very excited to do a completely new original costume for the witches. So if they were to ever come back, I would love to play again. Well, I I hope you get the chance. Um, I'm actually um, I'm going to wrap up with you, but like I've been familiar with some of your stuff. I'm a big fan of like Pitch Perfect the Pitch Perfect series, and I know you worked on that as well. So congratulations on all your success and being able to be a part of like something this huge. And I'm just glad it's doing so well and people get to see like all the great work that you put into it. Thank you so much. It was a pleasure talking with you. You too. Take care of yourself. I banish thee from Salem <gasps> forever. They were right to fear thee. Magic has a way of uniting. Happy 16th birthday, child. I have a gift for my favorite customers. Legend has it, it's on the 16th birthday that a witch gets her powers. Where did you get that? 
candle. We have to get out of here. The witches will be here any second. Ah! The, the book is alive. He woke up? <gasps> oh! If we intend to live past sunrise, we have to steal their souls. Whoa, 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 wait. Can we talk about this? No. <laughs> we must fly! <laughs> The eventual maniac obsessed with getting revenge on Salem. Sounds very bad for Salem. We should get some salt. Why? So we taste better when they eat us? Spread out. Six feet under. Stop! I am a good zombie!